Hey cats and kittens, it's Ed, sore throat bud here. I've just about got my voice back enough to give you this week's running news. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you are a regular viewer of the show, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch the new episodes for you. And it really does help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like. Sound like a strange mixture of Rod Stewart and Barry White today. I feel great though, aside from that. My Garmin watch reckons that I'm fitter than ever. And the Koros one thinks I'm some sort of atomic superman. So it's just the throat. I'm okay though, don't worry. Story one. Nike looks set to drop a brand new colorway of various shoes within their running collection. I think it's Barely Vault, that's the name of the color in question. Now we've got hits of orange and standard vault there as well. I think it goes through pretty much the whole of their 2021 running lineup. Enough upper changes here to warrant a price increase of 15 pounds over the original Vaporfly Next% 2 model. I will leave that up to you to decide. I'm still holding out though on the Rockabilly Tiger Print kind of one. I think it looks way better. I think we have the Tempo Next Percent Flyes, Pegasus 38 Flyes. I imagine we'll see an Invincible Run version, along with an Alpha Fly one. I have seen that, but it hasn't appeared yet on the UK website. I bet we'll get standard versions of the Pegasus 38 in this colorway as well. Not sure it really does an awful lot for me, this colorway. I think Nike are going through the motions a little bit. Maybe just selecting different things from the Nike buy you custom options and seeing what they can come up with. Feels a little bit like the Virgil Off-White releases that we keep seeing all the time. I don't know if you saw that, the 50 that released where he had 50 dunks, all pretty much the same apart from the tags, the tongue and the laces. Just small changes there. I'm not sure it really makes it worth 15 extra pounds this time around there's really not been that many next percent colorways that really knock me out aside from this one which is getting grayer and grayer the more and more i use it I and mean, you can really see it there i've used this shoe a lot story two viewers from a long while back will remember when i picked up the tree dasher shoes from all birds relatively forgiving on foot with some comfort there over some shorter miles a sustainable and eco-friendly brand have been building a strong following over the last few years. They've got like a low carbon approach. So not only producing the actual products using those sort of techniques, but also making sure that they deliver them as well using the same type of process. They've come up with a whole line of running gear that you can now pick up using the same sustainable methods. Merino wool, eucalyptus, tree fibers, and recycled nylon have been put to good use in a range of runners gear, including some supportive shorts, and running vests too, all made with their same low carbon footprint processes. The Allbirds gear I think may be a little bit higher in price here, but you've got to think about a lot of the time these slightly more premium products just hold up better over the course of many, many washes. I've seen that certainly. It's some cheaper gear that I've picked up and over time it really doesn't wash all that well and it doesn't smell that well either. I think you get what you pay for in terms of longevity and quality. By all accounts, the mix of materials here will be very breathable and quite soft as well, if that tree dasher up is anything to go by anyway. That was one of the softest materials I've had on foot. Do check out the links in the description if you want some more info about this running gear from Allbirds. Story three. I know lots of you out there are probably getting ready for the London Marathon that's happening on the 3rd of October 2021. Still a bit odd having the London Marathon in October, it doesn't feel quite right to me, but at least they are managing to put on the event this time, although there are some significant caveats. They've come up with six steps to the start line. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. It has sparked a huge amount of discussion though amongst runners. First off, you need to supply a predicted finishing time to the organizers. I think for a lot of people that might be a little bit tough to do. Certainly with London Marathon, sometimes it's just tough getting started. You know, best laid plans and all people's training has been all over the place really building up to this event. You now get an official kit bag that you've got to prepare beforehand and also drop in at the expo. I think the marathon shows on between the 29th and the 2nd of October. To be able to go to the show in the first place, you've got to have a negative lateral flow test. And when you drop your bag off, you get your bib number. So obviously you need that to actually race. So it's a necessary stop if you're going to go through the whole process. I think you can nominate someone to drop off your bag for you 
although you'll still have to meet them to get the bib number. They will need to have some sort of proof of request from you that you're dropping the bag off for them and also some photo ID and a negative lateral flow test. So quite a bit of prep needed there and evidence required. I think they're going to stagger the start of the event so in different waves over a one hour, 30 minute period. Obviously on race day, you will need evidence of a negative lateral flow test and they'll be doing random checks as well. They are advising people bring a belt so you can bring some water with you. Although there will be some water on the way round. I think that's the only way they can do it really. Certain people just won't run with water. I'm not a big fan of it myself. So they're trying to advise people to bring some sort of belt so you can bring water with you. What do you make of the restrictions and extra steps involved this time guys? Let me know in the comments below. Story 4. I was very interested to see the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent and also the Alpha Fly Next Percent popping up at a recent triathlon event but with customized adaptions or appointments, I suppose you could call them. Courtesy of the awesome Protos of the Gram Instagram account, we see here shots of a Velcro style strap adaption to the Air Zoom and Zoom X Monster, making it a far more viable option for multi discipline events. The Alpha Fly, you have to admit, is probably one of the hardest running shoes to get on, and that's just before a run without the constraints of time there obviously you have with a triathlon just getting your foot in the shoe is not easy you have to use a shoe horn sometimes i bet some people do that i wonder if you're allowed shoe horns at a triathlon event you could have a shoe horn by your shoes to help you get into them i'm sure that's a thing let me know if that's a thing down in the comments but it does provide some wild rebound and propulsion doesn't it so you can see why some people might be wanting to use the shoe in such an event i think it was only a matter of time that triathletes like cameron worth got the needle and thread out and his hook and loop material to make some sort of easy adaption imagine just sort of pulling that across slamming it shut would velcro provide enough of a lockdown though over the top of the foot I guess you've just got to get it right, haven't you? First time, no messing about. You can't really stop and fool around with your laces too much on a triathlon. Perhaps inspired a little bit by Nike's recent FlyEase models, it seems as though Cameron's a very active Alpha Fly user, even putting them on for some buggy and dog walking fun. It's great to see stuff like that on his Instagram account. You should go and check it out, actually. It seems like a really sound guy. What an athlete. Getting some miles in too as well with his dog and his little kid. Good extra training there. I imagine actually running with the buggies pretty tough going. Not sure I'm up to it. I wonder if we'll see an official release of an Alpha Fly model with those adaptions or something similar just to make it a little bit easier to get the shoe on foot. Perhaps the Alpha Fly isn't done after all. I'm still saving my pair back. I got plans for that pair. That's all the running news for this week, guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. Over the last week, I've been listening to pretty much one band, actually, and that's Half Man, Half Biscuit. I really do like their album, Achtung Bono. Quite a lot of the tracks on this album are higher tempo. Great for running, actually. I just love the lyrics. That's some of the best lyrics in a sort of indie rock song that I've ever heard. Very English. I really like track one, in fact, which is called Restless Legs, and it seems to be a phrase that we say quite a lot over here. Another favourite of mine on this album is Joy Division Oven Gloves. I think you need to listen to that one to experience the true majestic nature of the lyrics in that. Released back in 2005, this is certainly one to go and check out guys. Achtung Bono from Half Man Half Biscuit. Okay, that's just about all for me for today. Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me to the very end of the video, guys. It's much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. You can really help the channel out too by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.